Hey everyone, welcome to the 808 Podcast. It is a podcast that's eight minutes and eight seconds because 808 looks like Bob. Today we're doing something special. I got our CEO TC on. I'm going to give her one question. She's got eight minutes and eight seconds to answer it. And here we go. TC, question number one, why is follow-up not effective? Go. Okay, so everyone needs to know first thing, I'm going to kind of hurt people's heads. A lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I want you to hear the whole thing, okay? I am 59 and I've been doing sales forever. And in when I did sales, you couldn't really, the only way to do sales with anybody was face-to-face. -face. When you start, when I started, it was face-to-face, -face. very little on the phone. You might make an appointment with someone on the phone, but you couldn't show them anything. You could just talk to them, right? Am I really showing my age? <laughs> A little bit there. All right, now, because of that, you couldn't contact that many people. You didn't have multiple people to contact. You had a limited amount of number of people that you could count on. So once you contacted somebody, you followed up. And the rule was follow up at least seven times. That people don't make a decision for at least seven times. Okay. All right. Now, one thing I want to make very clear. I am not talking about a drip campaign. I am talking about following up yourself. All right. There's right. a difference for me. Where you manually do the interaction, whether it's right. email, you, phone call, text, smoke signal, whatever. Whatever it is, you're actually going and you have on, because I've been there, done that, had on my list. I need to, somebody says, follow up with me in three weeks. And in three weeks, you would send them a message. Oh, wait a minute. Contact me later. Contact me later. Contact me later. And I'd have this huge list of follow-ups that would never go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So when I say don't follow up, this is what I'm talking about. Number one, we have, unless you are in an industry that has very, very few people to contact. Now, if you're in an industry that you have very few people to contact, click off now because this is not going to help you. But if you have enough contacts, to can, enough leads, enough people, prospects out there that you can contact forever, why would you waste your time with people who are not interested? Why would you keep touching them again? They're mm -hmm. not going to change their mind. Now, that being said, there are people that are going to make a decision. All right. So here's how I do it. After I've talked to somebody and they say, contact me in three weeks. I say, do you mind if I share my screen? I pull up my calendar and I say, when? If you will not make an appointment with me right then and put it on your calendar right then, we're done. Right. So one lady I was talking to and she says, well, you know, call me back in three weeks. I'm really interested. And I, I says, okay, well, let, let's schedule a time. No, 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 you can just call me back. And I go, no. And she goes, what? And I said, look, you can't be that interested if you won't at least schedule a time with me. Right. Now, here's the thing, Bob. Not everybody shows. Mm -hmm. It's okay. People cancel beforehand. It's okay. At least I'm not tracing them down. Right. And that person, the other person who cancels beforehand, it doesn't give you a, hey, let's reschedule. They're just not interested. They're too weak to tell you no. Yeah. Why would you keep following up with them? Now, does everybody get put on a drip campaign? Yes. But here's what I call my drip campaign. It's to remind you how stupid you were for not buying. Yeah. It has nothing to, I, you have no more attention units in my brain. I don't remember you. I don't think about you. I don't, because it used to be, I would be thinking, oh, I get to call so-and-so. And in my mind, I'd have sales coming because I have get to follow up with six people on Thursday. And then nothing would happen. Right. Okay. Now I had a client that he scheduled a meeting with me and rescheduled it four times. Now on the fourth time I sent him an email and I said, Hey, are we actually going to meet this week? And he said, yes. And he bought. The reason was he was interested enough to schedule the next meeting. You know, Google lets you do that. Right. Okay. Right. There I are calendar programs that they just click the reschedule link to reschedule. Right. Now, if you don't reschedule, okay, I will send you an email and says, hey, are you going to reschedule? If not, that's okay. Just let me know. I, either way, 
And most time people will get back and say, no, or if they ghost me, they ghost me. You're done. Right. I put you on my drip campaign. I forget about you. I don't put you in any emotional energy into you because here's the thing. What our clients tell us is when they focus on what their clients say. So they share, here's the problem. Here's what my clients say, how I resolve the problem. So one client told me, she says, I don't do any more sales. I just look for interest. Right. I don't have to fight with people. I don't have to close them. I don't have to try to get them to say yes. I share the problems. Here's what my clients say, how I solve the problem. That's it. So now she said, I'm having sales conversations, not sales presentations. Correct. Okay. So I think that people have a thing about follow-up is they put it in their calendar and it's so easy to say, call me back in six months. Okay? Right. And I love what you usually say when somebody says, because uh, you're a little more direct than I am. I am. <laughs> tell me what you say when somebody says, call back in six months. I says, no, you call me back in six months. And that, that's just what I do that part there. Unless they want to put something on the calendar, then no. Just well, Also too, you tell people don't be a wimp. Yeah, I say this. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that part there. I'll say, this, okay, is this really a call me in six months or is this on um, two weeks to say no? <laughs> yeah. And now, here's the thing I've never had someone admit that they're two weeks to say no, but when the, how they interact to that question gives me a lot of data. Yeah. So, for example, we're working with an SEO company right now and we're doing some calls for them. And so, one of the person said, you'll call me back in you know, three months. And I asked them that question. They gave me three reasons why they'd be interested to talk in three months, not now. Okay, fine. I'll follow up with that person. Yeah. That's different there. But if it's just a, well, I just, I, I don't know if I'm ready, that part there. No, it's very three specific reasons. We're building the products. It's going to take two months to build it out. And three months is when we'll be ready to start optimizing it. Valid reason. There we go. Yep. Yeah. And for me, believe it or not, I make them get an appointment on the calendar. That we can do both ways there. Hey, TC, you've got a minute left. So let's do some closing statements. Okay. So if you want to know how to not have to follow up, how to use your client's words to do the selling for you so you can have sales conversation and not sales presentations, check out the link before, below. Perfect. There we go. Yeah, pulled it off, TC. One question in eight minutes and eight seconds because 808 looks like Bob. And guys, my name is Bob Clark. I am legally required to tell you to make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, rate it, whatever social media network tells you to do right now. You must do it because I'm legally required to tell you to do so. And you all have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bye.